In this tutorial we're going to talk about making a round button in Fireworks CS5. So we'll be making the button that you see here. And the reason we're creating this button is because it involves a number of techniques that will allow you to make uh, many different styles of buttons. So when you finish with this, hopefully you have a little bit of familiarity with some of the Fireworks tools and you can go off and create a button of your own. So let's get started. I'm going to start with a new file. This file is 500 pixels by 500 pixels. One thing I want to do with this workspace is I want to cover it with a light blue background because some of the objects that I'll be working with in this button are, have some transparency to them. And so they're hard to see on this transparent background here. So what I'm going to do is go to my vector tools and look at the uh, shape tools. And I'm going to make sure if I don't already see the rectangle tool that I have it selected. And I can go to the workspace and I can draw a rectangle across the entire workspace to make sure it's all covered. And this blue that I have here is entirely too bright. So I'm going to go down to the properties panel to the fill color and I'm going to open up the color wheel and I'm going to lighten this blue up and that's a better blue. I don't need something that's too too bright, just subtle enough that I can see something that's white. So I'm going to say OK and here I have now my background. I'm going to go to my layers palette. There's the rectangle layer that I just created. If I wanted to I could change the name just by double clicking the name rectangle which Fireworks names it as default, and I'm going to change it to background. And what I really want to do is lock this layer so that I don't accidentally move it or edit it while I'm building my button. So I'm going to click on this empty square, and a little lock will show up. That'll let you know that you've successfully locked your layer, and now I can't accidentally move it around. Now, the button that I'm creating is round, and the components require that I have five circles to start with. So I'm going to go back to my vector tools, and instead of selecting the rectangle tool, I'm going to select the ellipse tool. So I'm going to draw a circle, and to make a perfect circle, make sure you're holding down your shift key while you're dragging across your workspace, and that gives you a perfect circle. And I'm going to change my fill color here to a middle gray. And I want four copies of this. So I'm going to, well to create a copy you can either right click on the object and select edit and then select copy. Or you can select the object and hold down your shift key and your alt key and drag a copy down below. And that's the fastest way I know how to copy something. So click, shift, alt, drag. So we have four circles. I'm going to work on this the top version for now. And so this is going to be the base of the button. What I want here is a gradient fill, not a solid fill like we're seeing right now. So to change the fill type, what I'm going to do is look down in the properties panel and change the fill type from solid to gradient and specifically to a linear gradient, which you see here. And Fireworks gives us a default gradient to work with, and we can edit this. If you look back in the Properties palette, there's the Fill Color chip. If you click it, it'll give you the Gradient Editor now. And the Editor, these little toggles across the bottom of the gradient allow you to edit color. So what we're going to do is we're going to have two dark edges and a lighter color in the middle. So we need three toggles with different color values. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to move the white to the center and I'm going to create a third toggle just by clicking at the bottom of the gradient like that. So now we have three toggles and I can edit the colors of each one by clicking them. And I want to match the gray from the opposite side. So now we have a gradient with three color values. This is exactly what I want to do. We can tweak it later. Um, I would also like to rotate this gradient 90 degrees, and so we can rotate the object 90 degrees, the circle itself, or we can rotate the gradient by using the toggles here. And so if I were to grab 
the round end, it will let me move the gradient source for the origin point. So I'm going to move it so it's on the far left of the circle. And if I grab the rectangle, it'll let me change the angle of the gradient. And there we go. We've rotated the gradient and not the object. So that's the first step. Second step, we're going to take one of the other circles. This is going to be a button inset. And so we want the inset to be a little bit smaller. So with that circle selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the scale tool and make the circle smaller, like so. And I can center these by grabbing my select tool, highlighting both objects, going to the align palette, and selecting align horizontal and align vertical. Where they've aligned themselves on their centers, and now they're perfectly aligned. And this center gray needs to be lighter. So I'm going to change the color of the center, the inset circle, so that it is indeed lighter. I'm going down to the properties panel and editing the color. Go ahead. So I'm going to take our button base circle, and I'm going to edit the stroke. So if you look in the center of the properties palette, you'll see the stroke color value. And right now I don't have any, so if I click on that, it'll let me select the color for the stroke, and I'm going to choose a dark gray. And then for the middle inset button, I'm going to select a lighter gray for the stroke. Like so. All right, so we're ready to continue on. If you remember from our original button, and I'll just show it to you really quickly, uh, there's this crescent shape that we need to create. And we can create this crescent shape using the path tools in Fireworks. And it's going to take two objects to do that. And so we're going to use the punch path tool. So in the path palette, which you see on the right here, the punch path tool is the center option on the top. And what it does is it takes the object that's on the top and it'll knock out everything that it covers from the object below. For example, I'll show you what it does. With both circles selected, if I hit punch path, this is the result that we get. This isn't quite the shape that I want, so I'm going to undo control Z and I'm going to change the size of the top circle. So I get the shape that I want for the ellipse. So something like this would be more accurate. And I'm going to select both of these and align them horizontally again. So they're aligned horizontally. And what I'm going to do, highlight them both and hit punch path. There we go. And we can take this crescent shape and move it up to our button. And we need to apply a gradient to this, and we want to add some opacity to that gradient. We want to be able to see some of those button elements that are below it. So to do this, first what we're going to do is select the crescent shape, go down to the Properties panel, and change our gradient type from Solid to Gradient. And now we have a gradient here filling our crescent shape, and we want to change the values of the color so that it, the gradient starts dark on the top and moves to light on the bottom. So I'm going to go to the gradient editor. I'm just going to flip-flop my colors by dragging one to the left and one to the right, like so. And then I can edit the opacity for each color in the gradient by using the toggles at the top. So if I change the opacity for the left side, it's going to change the opacity for the color gray. If I change the opacity for the right side, it'll change the opacity for the white. So if I change the opacity for the white to 15, 20%, this is what we get. Now I can see some of the elements now beneath my crescent shape. 
think I'm going to change this gray so it's just a little bit darker. So, and I'm going to change the opacity of that gray to 90%. Change its blending mode. And so if you look back down on your properties panel, all the way to the right, you'll find the blending mode drop down. By default, everything is set to normal. So we can drop down the options, and I'm going to select multiply. What the multiply option does is it will darken darker values against each other, and it'll leave your light values light. And that's the effect that we're seeing here. All right. What I'm going to do next is create a screen that we're going to use to cover the entire button to give it more of a shiny look. And this screen is going to consist of a linear gradient that is uh, opaque on the right and the left side and white in the center. So I need a white gradient that changes opacity. And it'll look like this. I'm going to go back to my properties palette. Change the fill type from solid to gradient. You've seen this already, right? And then I'm going to change, edit the gradient itself so that both sides of the gradient are white. And I need a center point. And then what I'm going to do is change the opacity on the left and the right side. in the center and our opacity and we'll make that make sure that's 100 percent now we have a gradient that looks like this it looks really subtle and this is why i had us color the background something other than transparent or white so we could see this particular shape it's very hard to see so the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit the gradient and rotate it 90 degrees. So I'm going to move the source to the far left side of the object and change the angle of the gradient 90 degrees so it looks like this. So we're ready with this shape and I'm going to move it on top of our button like so. And there you go, show me button. The white is a little bit too white right now. So what we can do, select that top screen again and we can change the opacity in the layer palette for that ellipse so that some of those elements show below. So I'm going to change it to 80 percent. And This is what we have. Okay the next thing we need is our magnifying glass. So I'm going to move this down to the center of our workspace so I have some room to draw a magnifying glass. So in the vector shapes I'm going to select the donut shape specifically and before I draw my canvas on the workspace, I'm going to change the fill. So let's change the fill type first from gradient to solid. And I'm going to change the gray to be a darker gray. And I'm going to draw on the workspace something that might resemble the magnifying glass. And it's a little bit thick, but I can grab the inner radius toggle here in the shape and I can just pull out and make the edge a little bit thinner. So we have the lens of the magnifying glass. Now we need the handle. So I'm going to grab the line tool from the vector tools. And I'm going to click and drag to draw the handle. And it's just the line. There's no stroke to it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the stroke color to the same dark gray and increase it to as good as six pixels. And I'm going to use my arrow key just to move it into place. And I'll highlight both of them. I'm going to group them by using Command G on Mac or Control G on PC. And now they're one object that's easy to grab. And I can move it down onto the button.